you ready for eight breakfast freezer meals that use whole foods, simple ingredients, and taste that the whole family can agree on? Then join me in my kitchen for a bit because these breakfast freezer meals are busy morning grab and go approved. Now honey, I'm gonna give these recipes to you grandma style, meaning that they're so simple and I make them so often that I've never actually written the recipes down. Plus all of these recipes emphasize working with what you already have. So sometimes I use a little bit more or less of something or I have to substitute some ingredients and that's exactly what a low waste kitchen should prioritize. But if you're new to this breakfast freezer meal prep thing, I'll pop back in later with some of my recipe tips to explain some of the things that you're gonna see me do, which absolutely save you time and money. Let's start with some cornbread sausage and egg muffins. For some of you, I had you a cornbread, which is already a savory side into itself. But this recipe adds cream, corn, and the breakfast fixings that'll keep you full all morning long. Start by browning your breakfast sausage in a skillet. Then pour in beaten eggs, stirring frequently, and cook until both are done. Remove from heat and set aside. Now it's time to make your cornbread mixture, which I make from scratch using equal parts cornmeal and flour, a little bit of sugar and a sprinkling of salt, two tablespoons of baking powder so that they'll rise, uh, two eggs, and then you'll eyeball a cup of milk or add more to give you the consistency of a moderately easy to stir, but not runny batter. Next, add about a half cup of melted butter to thin things out a bit more, and then you'll fold in a can of creamed corn and the sausage and egg combo, a bit of green onions and cheese using look and feel to give things a good mix before spooning into a muffin pan. Toss in a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes. When it's finished baking, you'll be left with these dense, heavy breakfast muffins that are hearty and savory. Set them on a rack to cool. Honey, would you look at how moist, meaty, and cheesy these are? Remember, the goal is to freeze them, not to eat them immediately, which will be hard, so plan on setting some aside for immediate enjoyment. After your muffins have cooled, store them in a freezer safe bag for up to three months. Next up is pancake on a steak. And y'all, these are essentially breakfast corn dogs. Now you've likely seen these in the supermarket freezer cases because they are extremely popular and tasty. But darling, the markup on them is extreme. When you think about it, all you're paying for is a sausage link that's been dipped in pancake batter. And the markup is right in front of your face or sometimes in the same freezer case because I saw a package of just the sausage links and then I saw the Jimmy Dean or maybe it was like the off brand in the same freezer case and the markup was like five fold. You can whip these up in batches and have a crowd pleaser that everyone loves. Take a look. In a large skillet, cook sausage links until done. A trick I use to make sure my links are fully cooked on the inside is to steam them with a bit of water. Now after they cook, you'll place them on a plate lined with paper towels, but y'all, I'm just using a cast iron pan with a mini oven rack placed on top, which drains the grease just as easy and then seasons my skillet for the next meal. Now you'll need bamboo skewers for this recipe, which you can easily find at a craft store or online. And what you'll do is just insert the wooden skewers into the end of the cooked sausage links and then set them aside. Now it's time to make your pancake batter. I use a premix that I keep on hand, but the box version works too. Now here's the trick, you only wanna add enough of your wet ingredients to create a lumpy batter. I want you to lean in real close so you can get a good look. You want something like this. See, super thick. Here's the fun part. Stick your sausage skewers into the batter and evenly coat with the mix. Then place into a pan with moderately warm oil. These cook pretty fast, so I would just work with about three at a time. Cook until the batter is golden brown in color and then remove from the skillet to drain and cool. Dipped in maple syrup, these are everything waking up should be. Even better, they freeze wonderfully and reheat quickly.
Make Ahead Frozen Oatmeal is not getting enough attention. Y'all know that I love oatmeal and I obsessively eat it every day during the work week because it's the only thing that sticks to my ribs and keeps me full and not rummaging through my lunchbox by 10 o'clock. But some mornings I'm on the struggle bus and I don't have time to cook oatmeal. Overnight oats are an option for some, but I don't enjoy my oatmeal cold. So don't put it in the fridge, put your oatmeal in the freezer. Freezer oatmeal cups are the breakfast idea you've been waiting for if you're on a mission to save time in the morning. You'll start by cooking quick, old fashioned, or still cut oats using your favorite method. Now I like to sneak a little wheat germ and quinoa in to pack in a few more nutrients. I'll also add some vanilla, cinnamon, brown sugar, and any dried fruit I have on hand like craisins. And then I also added a couple of chopped dates. Give things a good stir and then place your oatmeal in a container that you can store in the fridge for an hour or two because you want your oatmeal to firm up a bit. After your oatmeal has cooled, portion your oatmeal into the muffin cups. During the winter months, I take advantage of frozen fruit sales to purchase fruit that's cheaper and better tasting than the fresh but out of season fruit varieties that you'll find at the store. Go ahead and press your frozen fruit into your oatmeal. We're not done yet. I usually like to add a combination of nuts. In this case, I had a few almond slices and pecans that I added to my oatmeal cups. When you're finished with the assembly, place them in the freezer for a minimum of four hours and up to overnight. Using a silicone muffin tin makes removal easy work. They'll truly just slide right on out. And is it just me or do these look simply beautiful? Place them in a freezer bag and let me show you how easy these are to make when you have a frantic morning. All you need is a wide mouth jar, silicone jar jacket, and lid, and you can be out the door in the morning. Just pop as many of the oatmeal cups into a jar as you'd like, and you're on your way. When I arrive at work and can catch my breath, all I have to do is add hot water, toss in the microwave, and I've got a healthy version of instant oatmeal that's delicious. Now this is the way to enjoy oatmeal on the go. Oh, by the way, the jar jackets are a great way to allow you to hold a hot jar in your hands, and I highly recommend them. If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start canning, gardening, and learning home setting skills in a small space and in your spare time. Next up is green eggs and ham. Hey, we gotta keep breakfast fun. And while you may have seen eggs turn green because of food coloring, in this recipe it's because of the chopped spinach. And spinach is an excellent choice for adding color, nutrients, and mild flavor. Mixed in with the salty ham and the cheese, even your picky eaters won't notice the spinach or the green taste of the muffins. Frozen chopped spinach is best for this recipe because you don't have to use a blender to shred fresh spinach like I am, but hey, use what you have. Once this step is done, add your eggs and any health powders. This is one that we usually drink, but it's fine to add them to food as well. Next, you're gonna toss in some cheese and stir to combine. I wanted to stretch this a bit, so I added some milk. Toss in chopped bacon or ham, and then pour into a muffin tin to bake in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. What comes out are vibrantly green egg cups that are hard to miss, but fun for kids and adults to enjoy. Eggs and hash browns were made for each other. Start by browning several slices of bacon in a skillet. You can use either frozen hash browns or make them yourself like I am since I already have potatoes. And I don't bother to remove the skins because you really don't taste them. Sprinkle with a little seasoned salt and pepper on top and then stir to combine. Add the hash browns to a muffin tin and then top with bacon and the fixings of your choice. Finally, pour over the beaten egg mixture and place in the oven to bake. Ah! 
Now don't forget to save the bacon grease to oil your pans for meals later on in the week. Bacon grease that's covered and drained will last for several weeks right on your counter, but I plan to use this in the next day or two for other freezer meals. All right, our muffins are ready. Set them on a baking rack to cool. These are the perfect little cups and come out so savory. Store them in the freezer for up to four months. All right, so I want to jump in here with a few of my recipe tips. These recipes use a lot of eggs, so if you're running low on them, you can stretch your eggs by just adding some milk. And it's usually like a tablespoon or two for every egg. Now, in some recipes, having the exact cheese is a game changer. But honey, if you saw me use cheddar, but all you have on hand is mozzarella, go ahead and use that. And for any of these recipes, you can substitute the pork for a turkey option or leave the meat out altogether for a vegetarian option. Now, none of these recipes require special equipment, but I will do my best to link the items and ingredients that you see me using and the description box below. If there's one takeaway from our time together, it has to be this. Double or triple the recipe the first time you make it so that meal prep is easier the next time. From scratch is talking about the final product. Lord knows I can't wait to skip all these steps the next time and just throw it in the oven. So freezers can become chaotic places very quickly, which is why I like to use freezer baskets. And I have a couple of them in my upstairs freezer. And so what you'll notice me doing is that I have a basket in my upstairs freezer that is just for my breakfast items. So every time, I need to tell either my husband or guest or whoever, hey, I need you to grab something out of the freezer. They know to go straight to that one basket. And then in the other baskets, I have things like my meats and vegetables and whatnot. So if you are not already using freezer baskets or some way to partition the items in your freezer, give it a try. Now, I really try to keep my disposables in the kitchen to a minimum. Now, I haven't reached perfection on this yet, and I do have a number of the silicone reusable bags, but it's not enough for me to use those exclusively. So as a workaround to using the disposable sandwich baggies, one of the things that I've gotten really consistent about doing is after I take something from the oven, I will A, let it cool down, and then oftentimes I will put um, all of the individual um, little muffin cups in the freezer just on a plate so that they start to freeze individually. And this is excellent because then all I have to do is just toss them into a silicone bag and they're easy enough to just pull out individually they don't clump together. And so I don't need to waste, you know, individual plastic bags um, when I need something that's a grab and go option. Take advantage of freezer sales and grocery cycles to make sure that the ingredients that you're purchasing are at the lowest price. And if you need help with what to buy and when, each month here on the channel, I host a pantry chat to give you a grocery guide. You've got to try waffle egg muffins because what's better than all your favorite breakfast food stuffed in a waffle cup? And that's exactly what waffle egg muffins are. Now here's some bacon grease that I keep in the fridge. I'm using it to oil my aluminum muffin pan because I'm not using disposable cupcake liners. The oven is already heated, so I'll just pop the pan in there to melt the grease while I assemble the other things. Start by creating a mixture of eggs, milk, and Parmesan cheese that's seasoned as you like with salt, pepper, and seasonal. I don't have a waffle maker and I prefer to stay away from packaged waffles, but once in a blue moon, we'll enjoy them. Go ahead and put the mini waffles in the muffin tin. Next, top with cheese, and what makes this recipe quick is my jar of home canned sausage. Y'all, this is fully cooked, shelf-stable meat that I canned a few months back from an incredible sale that I found. Crumbled canned sausage is a spot-on version of what you get when you cook it in the skillet. See how the look and the texture are hard to discern a difference? Spoon the sausage on top, add more cheese, and your egg mixture. What comes out of the oven are these fun little bite-sized things that taste like a complete breakfast meal in your mouth on the go. But if you do have time to eat these at home, pour maple syrup on top and truly soak up the flavor. When you don't have time for pancakes, scrambled eggs, and sausage on a plate, stack them into a sandwich and keep your morning moving. All we're doing in this recipe is making a regular breakfast, so start by making your pancakes. 
Now I like to keep them on the smaller side for easy assembly later on. Next, you'll go ahead and cook your eggs. Honey, I've also got canned sausage patties on the shelf, which taste <laughs> incredible and keeps it chew. I drained my sausage broth and then started making my sandwiches. are assembled, you'll want to put them in the freezer to set. Did you know coffee liners are cheaper than napkins and essentially do the same thing? Yep, I learned this from my mom. Since I'll be warming these up in the microwave and eating them on the go, this is the plastic-free lower cost option that I like to use. Now let me tell you, spaghetti squash hash brown cups are clever little things. Spaghetti squash stores beautifully for months at a time, so I always tend to have several on hand. Start by baking your squash in the oven until tender, about 40 minutes depending on size. I'm grabbing a jar of home canned chunked ham, which is so, so good in this recipe. After your squash has baked, remove the seeds and fill your muffin pan with the squash, later adding your ham and egg and cheese mixture. It's only after your family has committed to the first bite that they'll even see the spaghetti squash and goodness knows you can't taste it because the squash flavor is so mild. This is a great way to sneak in veggies when you can. If you enjoy these breakfast freezer meals and need similar inspiration for a week's worth of breakfast, lunch, and dinner recipes, you'll wanna check out the video that pops up on your screen. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends.